Hi, this is Miss Natalie. I am a UL student majoring in early childhood education, so I'm studying to be a teacher. Um, today I'm going to be doing a read aloud for you. Um, this is through the organization called Kappa Delta Pi. Um, it's an education society. So that's what we're going to do today. Um, I have a few books lined up. Um, I'm just going to judge my time and um, see how many we can get in. Um, I do actually have one activity that I would like for you to do at home. Um, after we're done reading one of these books, we'll actually do that one first. Um, and I will put my email in the um, comment box or the description box below this video. That way, um, once you're done with your activity, if your parents are there to help you and they are okay with it, um, you can email me a picture of the activity that we're going to do, okay? Because I would love to see um, anything that you do. Um, the little activity that we're doing is going to be like some artwork. So I would really, really like to see some of your artwork if you would love to send it in for me. So, um, but you have to make sure you have your parents' permission first, okay? So with that being said, we are going to go to the first book. I'm going to share my screen with you. That way you can see the book as I'm reading. Um, and I do have some dogs at my house. So if you hear dogs barking, I am so sorry. It's hard to get them to be quiet. <laughs> But all right, let's go ahead and we'll get started reading. Whoops. The first book we're going to read is called Madeline in London. <clears throat> okay, so let me flip this. I think I need to flip it a few times. There we go. Okay, so here's the first page when you open it up. Madeline in London. All right, here we go. In an old house in Paris that was covered with vines lived 12 little girls in two straight lines. They left the house at half past nine. The smallest one was Madeline. In another old house that stood next door lived Pepito, the son of the Spanish ambassador. An ambassador doesn't have to pay rent but he has to move to wherever he's sent. He took his family and his hat. They left for England, all but the cat. So here you can see the 12 little girls. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. Okay. I'm glad, said the cat. There goes that bad hat. Let him annoy some other kitten at the embassy in Great Britain. The little girls all cried, boo hoo, we'd like to go to London too. In London, Pepito just picked at his dinner. Soon he grew thin and thin, he, then he grew thinner. And when he began to look like a stick, his mama said, my boy, this, my, this boy looks sick. I think Pepito is lonely for Madeline and the little girls next door. Sorry if I mess up on some of the words. His papa called Paris. Hello, Miss Clavel. My little Pepito is not well, is not at all well. He misses you and he's lonesome for Madeline and the little girls next door. May we request the pleasure of your company? There's plenty of room here at our embassy. Quick, darlings, pack your bags, and we'll get out to the airport and catch the next jet. So there's all the little girls. They're all excited. They're going to get to go to England. Fill the house with lovely flowers. Fly our flags from all the towers. For Pepito's birthday, bake the most wonderful birthday cake. Place 12 beds in, straight, in two straight lines. The last one here will be for Madeline. Welcome to London, the weather's fine. And it's exactly half past nine. Good heavens, said Miss Clivel. We've brought no toy for his, ex for his Excellency's little boy, said Madeline. Everybody knows, of course, he's always said he craved a horse. In their little purses, 
and in Miss Clevel's bag, there wasn't enough money to buy the meanest snack. But in London, there's a place to get a retired horse to keep as a pet. And when they went to the place, they found a horse that was gentle, strong, and sound. Some poor old Dobbins are made into glue, but not this one. Look, he's as good as new. Happy birthday, Pepito. Happy birthday to you. This lovely horse belongs to you. So the little girls and Miss Clavel got him a horse. That's very sweet. Just then, Tara, Tara, the trumpet blew suddenly outside and off he flew over the wall to take his place at the head. Of the queen's, uh, of the queen's life guards, which he had always led, before the Royal Society for the Protection of Horses had retired him from Her Majesty's forces. Oh dear, they've gone. Oh, what a pity. Come, children, we'll find them in the city. Careful, girls. Watch your feet. Look right before you cross the street. Oh, for a cup of tea and crumpets. Hark, hark, there goes the sound of trumpets. These birds have seen all this before. but they are glad of an encore. And so are the people on ship and shore. And now it's getting really grand. Here comes the mascot and his band. The people blue, the people below are stout and loyal, and those on the balcony mostly royal. The show is over, it's getting dark, in the city, in the park. Dinner is waiting, we must be on time. Now let's find Pepito and Madeline. Well, isn't it lovely? They're standing sentry right here at the witch, witch hall entry. That is the power and the beauty. In England, everyone. everyone was in his bed only one was forgotten he'd been on his feet all day long without anything to eat in a cottage that was thatched wearing trousers that were patched lived the gardener who loved flowers especially in the morning hours when their faces fresh with dew smiled at him how do you do the gardener who was never late opened up the garden gate the gardener dropped his garden hose there wasn't a daisy or a rose all my work and all my care were not oh this is hard to bear what do you think happened to the roses and the daisies? Who did they forget to feed? 
Where is my celery, carrots, tomatoes, my beans and peas? And not an apple on my apple trees? Everybody had to cry. Not a single eye was dry. Oh, look who is lying there with his feet up in the air. I feel his breath. He's not dead yet. Quick, Pepito, get the vet. So what does it seem like? The horse probably ate all of the things in the garden, and now he's sick. The vet said, don't worry, he's only asleep. Help me get him on his feet. As a diet, there is nothing worse than green apples and roses for an old horse. Dear lady, said Miss Clavel, we beg your pardon. It seems our horse has eaten up your garden. A little sunshine, a little rain, and it all will be the same again. Pepito's mother said, quite so, quite so. Still, I'm afraid the horse must go. Then Madeline cried, and I know what, cried, I know what to do. Pepito, let us take care of him for you. Fasten your seatbelt in half an hour. You will see the Eiffel Tower. Madeline, Madeline, where have you been? We've been to London. Good night, little girls. Thank the Lord you are well. And now go to sleep, said Miss Clavel. And she turned out the light and closed the door. There were 12 upstairs and below one more. The end. Awesome. All right. So the activity that I had planned for us to do is actually going to require you to do a little bit of research, okay? So you may need to have a parent help you with this, okay? You're just gonna have to search up and I'll share my screen with you so that way you can see my directions. Okay, so here are the directions that I had for you, okay? So imagine that you and your family have to move to London, okay? London, England, that's where they were at in the book, okay? What major landmark would you want to visit first? So the main one that they talked about in the book, I'll go back to it real quick, was the Eiffel Tower, okay, right here. You see this Eiffel Tower right here? Okay, so that's a major landmark in London, okay? A lot of people who visit London go there and they'll take pictures, okay? So, but, there, but there's other ones, okay? That's just one that was found in the book. So. You could research the Big Ben, the Westminster Abbey, the Buckingham Palace, the London Bridge, or any other landmarks that you can find in London, okay? I want you to pick one of those, and I want you to draw a picture of it with your family, okay? So I want you to imagine that you're on a vacation. You went on vacation to London. You're going to see this landmark. What is it going to be, okay? So, like I said, you might need a parent to help you, okay? So, get on the computer um, and search for a landmark. If you don't feel like doing that or you don't know how to do that, we can just draw the Eiffel Tower. That's what Miss Natalie is going to draw. She's going to draw the Eiffel Tower, okay? And I'm going to do that with you, okay? So, you will need a piece of paper and some colors of your choice, okay? And you are going to start drawing your picture, okay? So what I want you to do is take your time, pause the video, um, find the landmark you wanna draw. Draw that, draw your family in it. If you have dogs, draw your dogs, cats, birds, whatever. Whatever you consider your family, okay? I want you to draw that, okay? So pause this video and when I come back, I will show you my picture that I drew, okay? 
All right, so Miss Natalie just finished her drawing. So hopefully you had enough time to do that. And obviously if you're watching this now, you press play and you're ready to keep going. So I'm gonna share mine with you, okay? So Miss Natalie drew the Eiffel Tower. This is my spouse, his name is Santos. This is Miss Natalie right here, that's me. And this is my dog, he is a boy, his name is Bose. This is my other dog. Her name is Honey. She's a girl. And then this right here was my first dog. She's little, she's smaller than the other two. But this is Peanut, okay? So, and I just wrote that Miss Natalie and her family at the Eiffel Tower. So this was my drawing. I didn't have like really awesome colors like you guys probably do, but this is it. This is what I wanted you guys to do for me. So, um, and you might not have drawn the Eiffel Tower. You might've done a different one and that's completely okay. Um, so if you want to take a picture of your drawing <clears throat> and you can email it to me, I'm going to have my email at the bottom of the video. Um, so just make sure it's okay with your parents and you can send me those pictures because I really want to see those awesome drawings that y'all did. Okay. So I'm going to put that right there <clears throat> and we still have some time left. So we're going to go ahead and read another book. Okay, now I am going to share my screen again, that way you can see it, and we will get started doing that. Okay, so here's what we're going to read. It's called The Apple Pie Tree, okay? Oh, I'll have to flip it a few times. There we go. Okay, so The Apple Pie Tree, okay? My sister and I have a tree that grows the best part of apple pie. Can you guess what that is? It's apples. And every year we watch our apple tree grow. In winter, our apple tree is brown and bare. But in the spring, leaves grow on every branch. Look. Two robins are building a nest in our tree. See the two little robins right here? Tiny pink flowers bud, flower buds appear on the branches. The robins chirp loudly, guarding their eggs. There, now they have eggs in their little nest. Just when the flower buds open, baby robins break through their eggshells. So now the babies are here. They were eggs and now they're out. Now our tree is covered with blossoms and the baby robins begin to grow feathers. When breezes blow and the petals fall to the ground, mama and papa robin teach their little birds to fly. Here they are, they're flying. Some days it rains and the wind blows hard, but our apple tree is strong and the robins are safe in the branches. Here they are, tucked away. Oops. Small green apples grow where the blossoms used to be. Okay, so here, that's what they're talking about. The little apples are starting to grow. That's where the flowers were. Soon it is summer. The apples get bigger and bigger. The little robins have grown up, but they visit every day. <clears throat> the branches bend down low. They are covered with big round apples. Now it is autumn. The apples are red and ready to be picked. We fill our basket to the brim. Mom and dad help us peel the apples, cut them up, and pile them into a pie shell. Then we sprinkle cinnamon sugar, cinnamon and sugar over the top. Mom puts the pan in the oven. I see this cat is trying to get some of the apple peelings. At last, 
The pie is cooked and ready to be eaten. Our tree has grown an apple pie. It smells so good. And it tastes delicious. There's nothing as good as an apple pie you grew yourself. The end. Awesome. So what I like about this story is that it has this extra little snippet in the back of it. Okay, so it says, how bees help our apples grow. So right here on the little flowers, that's called the pollen. Okay, and inside of there is nectar. Okay, so it says inside each flower are tiny stems, some tipped with yellow pollen and some with sticky tops. Nectar deep inside smells sweet. Here's the pollen attached to the, to the bee, okay? The bright petals and sweet nectar attract bees. Pollen collects on the bee's body. Right there. As the bees fly from flower to flower, pollen clings to the sticky tops. So this is called pollination. The petals fall off and the base of the flower begins to swell. This is the beginning of an apple. So this is what we saw in the book, the apple beginning to grow. Okay. So it says we're gonna to need to mix two cups of all-purpose flour and one teaspoon of salt in a large bowl. Then you need to cut up two thirds cup of butter into small pieces and mix it in. Then you're gonna sprinkle one third cup of ice water on top and mix till the dough makes a loose ball. Okay, then you're gonna cut it in half roll out one half of the floured on a floured board to form a circle 12 inches across and one fourth inch thick i think is what that says it's a little tiny on my screen um gently place in a nine inch pie pan roll out remaining dough the same way and cover with a towel okay step two is to fill the pie so it wants you to peel six to eight apples and cut them up, removing the centers. Put the slices into the pie pan, sprinkle one teaspoon cinnamon and half a cup of sugar over the slices. The third step is to close the pie. So place the second circle of dough over the apples, pinch the edges together and trim off the extra dough. Make small holes in the top. The fourth step is to bake. You're going to bake it at 400 degrees for 50 minutes. Then you're gonna serve and eat. Yum. I don't know about you, but I think I wanna go make an apple pie now. And that is the end. All right. So I think we still have some more time. I have two more books that we can read, okay? So, let me share my screen again. I just like popping back in to see your faces. Okay, so here's the next one. I like this one. This one's a cute book. All right, so this one is called The Big Bad Rumor. Ooh, who knows what a rumor is? The Big Bad Rumor. So a rumor is something that is kind of made up. It was something that you heard and someone told it to you and you go tell it to someone else and maybe some of the words got mixed up and now it just doesn't make sense anymore. And that's pretty much what happens in this story. It's a big bad rumor. So let's see what's going on with this goose right here or duck. I think it's a goose, we'll see. <laughs> The Big Bad Rumor by Jonathan Mayers, pictures by Jacqueline East. 
there's a big bad wolf coming and he's hopping mad, cried the Google-eyed goose all in a flap. So he is a goose, I was right, first time. <laughs> What's that? There's a hopping mad wolf and he's bad and he's big, cried the whimpering weasel, whiskers twitching. So this is what he's imagining, a big bad wolf. What's that? There's a whooping bad wolf and he's wearing a wig? Cried the jittery jay, tail flicking. So now that turned into this. What's that? He's shopping mad and he's scaring a pig? Cried the harried hedgehog. Prickly, prickles prickling. Okay. What's that? There's no stopping him now. He's so mean and scary, cried the panicking polecat, body quivering. What's that? He's the size of a cow and incredibly hairy, cried the muttering mole, nose dribbling. No, stop. You've got it all wrong, cried the observant owl, eyes blazing. Pay attention to goose. Don't listen to mole. What's that? He wrestled a moose and then swallowed him whole, cried the frantic fox, bushy tail bristling. Now that's pretty crazy. No, no. Quiet, everyone, cried the Google-eyed goose in an even bigger flap. This is becoming ridiculous. Who is? Who's coming to tickle us? Whispered the baffled beetle, shell shivering. There's a big, oh, I skipped the part. Stop, 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 cried the Google-eyed goose in, a, in the biggest flap of all. Now, listen very carefully. There's a big bad wolf coming and he's hopping mad. Knock, knock. Yikes, that'll be him now. Quick, everyone hide. Knock, knock. Who's there? A small sad wolf. A small sad wolf. Are you hopping mad? No. You're not? Phew. I'm a small, sad wolf, and I've brought my dad. Told you so, said the Google-eyed goose. Beaten. All right. So that's another good one. I like how that one ended. All right. We actually have more time. So I'm just going to hop on over to the next book. <clears throat> So this one is called I'm Your Bus, okay? I really like this story. Um, I like anything that deals with school, which is why I want to be a teacher. I love it. But um, I really like this book. It's very cute. The pictures are awesome. Um, they kind of look hand-drawn. Um, and it's just neat. It's a different type of story. It's, it's giving the bus a story instead of it being just about people or animals, you know? So we're going to go ahead and read this. It's called I'm Your Bus, and it's by Marilyn Singer. is a page where they put dedications. So dedications mean that the author who wrote the book wrote it for someone. They wrote it for specific people. They dedicated it to certain people, okay? So that's usually gonna be one of the first pages you see when you open a book, okay? So in this book, it is to Andrew and Mary, to my nephews, Ethan and Julian Quinn, okay? So, MS right here, it says to Andrew and Mary, MS is Marilyn Singer. So she's the author, okay? 
And where it says to my nephews, Ethan and Julian Quinn, behind it says EP. And that's for Evan Polnai. Okay, so he's the one who drew the pictures. So both people who made this book, they got to dedicate it to people. Okay. So now we can get going. Howdy, you can count on us. Morning, evening, I'm your bus. This is what everyone's school bus looks like, doesn't it? You have the little stop sign and the little doors right here. Might not have eyes and mouth, but it looks similar. Sweepers sweeping, bakers baking. Dawn is barely even breaking. Time for buses to be waking. Okay, so you see all the buses are kind of sleepy. They're getting ready to wake up. The sun's coming out. Hurry, hurry, now it's eight, but busy buses can't be late. In the morning, we won't wait. Get on, Jamie, Carlos, Gus, Casey, Lacey, I'm your bus. Past the waving traffic cop, past the friendly tire shop. There's the school zone, buses stop. All the buses lined up. There's a little traffic cop. Watch those backpacks coming through. Have fun today. Learn something new. Later, we'll come back for you. Haley, Michael, Hannah, Russ, see you later. I'm your bus. On the seats we buses find, lots of school books, every kind, pencils, glasses left behind. Bats and caps, how fabulous. I'll keep them safe because I'm your bus. So here's all the things that sometimes get left on the bus. There's the books, the glasses, the pencils and crayons. I know I've left a few things on the bus before. Buses may take you to see a zoo, a farm, a factory. We linger outside patiently. Ooh, elephant and giraffes. Looks like they're playing with the bus. Taxis zip by on their way to an airport or a cafe. Buses go home, sit, and stay. Quiet hours, we don't fuss. Parking, driving, I'm your bus. Yay, the school day's at an end. Kids are leaving. They depend on each bus to be a friend. Buses lined up in a row. Lisa, Devin, Chloe, Mo. Find your bus and off you go. How'd you grade me? Wow, A plus. I'm so proud that I'm your bus. Night is falling, watchmen guard. Buses settled in the yard. We had fun and we worked hard. There's a little night guard watching all the buses. Through the city, limos creep. Shh, don't toot, don't honk, don't beep. Tired buses are asleep. Tomorrow you can count on us. Daytime, nighttime, I'm your bus. The end. Awesome. I think that one might be my favorite. I like that book a lot. I'm definitely gonna have to get that one for my classroom. All right, well, that's all the books that I have for y'all. Um, I do have a second video that should be posted up um, if you click on my page. Um.
Okay. All right. I'll see you all next time.